<laughs> What's with these airplanes today? Darn it. Hold on, there we go. There we go. And we got some go, 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 go. planes. <laughs> Good day and welcome to a new video. Alright, it's gone. Hello, and hopefully you guys are watching me live. Um, if not, this is pre-recorded pretty much for you guys. Um, yeah, and today it's um, the creature scene part two with Kuro Express. Hey! Hello! It's Cypress, by the way. <laughs> oh, Cypress. There we go. It still stays offline, but then it's got a green signal thing there. Um. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so you'll be watching my painting process um, at the moment. I've got in, like, in this part, I've got in pretty... The colors all worked out. Um... Because I, I start off with doing the initial sketches and then trying to get those um, sketches right. And then um, I go into more detail with it. Usually I just straight from there go to colour. Um, I'm bad with that. I don't exactly go uh, full doing much black and white work lately. Um, studying tones mm. and things. But... Um, lately I've been studying a bit more tones and things, but I kind of, I understand that. I've done a bit of colour theory, so, um, I, it's always something I'm thinking about while doing, um, mm. but yeah, that's pretty much on in the background, so I just, um, pop up Ku, eh, oh, is it Cypress's work? <laughs> For a minute here, I'll pop your work up, um. Doesn't look like sure. we're gonna hit the light. From my end, it still s did. Yeah, from my end, it still looks uh, off live stream offline. Yeah, it. M I think yeah. something's wrong with YouTube at the moment. If anyone out there um, wants to watch these live streams per se and knows how to fix them, please get in contact with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just looking at his work here. Um, so yeah, he's been on before, so you can. Um, Check out his work, um, either in the previous video or in this video, the link down in the description. Um, and today, as usual, I'll be asking questions along the way and talking about um, certain topics and things. Um, in the last video we did um, with Cyprus, we talked about more like interview kind of questions, eh? Um, so you go go check that out. Um, today it's pretty much focused on scenes um, because there's three parts um, series. Um, I find it easier to make three parts because I, I do spend a lot of time um, working on these projects and cutting mm -hmm. them into 40 minute sections um, I feel is good because Sometimes with speed paints, you don't see all the little um, process that goes into it. So there's a lot that you can miss out on. Mm. Um, whether everyone wants to take nice. the time out to do that, though, I don't know. Um, so, mm -hmm. Cypress, um, do when you... Do you create? You seem to create um, some scenes. Um, how do you go about creating these scenes and things? Um, you mean like illustrations with backgrounds and such? Um, well, more yeah, more complex um, illustrations. Um. I guess it's it's something I learned from uh, an artist called uh, by the name of Bobby Chu mm -hmm. over at Schoolism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he said that uh, the uh, the important thing of an illustration is 
to have a story behind it. So I guess, yeah. Um, I think of the story I want to get people, I want people to get, then use visual elements to create a mental image that promotes that story. Not saying that I've mastered this, though I myself still have a long, long way to go on this, but I strive for it. For instance, if the character is gruff, but, you know, soft-hearted, I would use a strong expression, but with warm colors, with perhaps uh, a complete opposite character to interact with, to portray that um, rough exterior, but soft interior, something like that. So, it's something I try to do whenever possible, but um, it's, it's not always possible, because sometimes people order commissions that are more concept art in nature, which has practically no story. So, it's basically just a, a, a mannequin of the character in a stand-up position with no background or story whatsoever. It's just an exploration of design. But in terms of commissions, I have to admit it's a bit harder to do because some clients come with a set idea of what you have to follow, even though you don't think the pieces actually fit together. Like um, a client comes, I want my character post like this, uh, when in this sort of background, uh, wearing this, using that expression. Everything is already um, set up for you, and so there's no really there's no room for you to um, modify things or uh, a creative freedom, basically. Mm. So I love it when 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 commissioners give me artistic freedom because it gives me room to breathe. And some of my best commission works were from clients like that, actually. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, just to say that if you are watching on the live stream thing, just just ask the questions in the chat. I do see the chat, um, but yeah, you might not be able to see the video, unfortunately. Um, I've put that there anyway. Yeah, it's um, it's fun when you have that creative freedom. Um, like I've had it all the way through um, design schools because um, I've been studying for five years um, in it, and I, you know, I haven't dealt with many clients and things. Um, so when it's your own work, it's fun to have that playtime. Um, but you're yeah, working with clients is very different. That you have to create what they're looking for, in a way. Um, and some of them will shoot me mm, down if mm -hmm. it doesn't look right, you know, like, um, either, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, either, like, anatomically wrong, or, um, technically wrong, or something like that, or if it's just not the look or style they're going for, um, so, yeah. I feel, um, yeah, you the main aim is to tell the story with the image. Um, like here, I'm trying to tell the story yeah. um, in my own way. It's not. Ex it might not be apparent to everyone, because um, I'm still. I'm still like trying to learn, as we all are, um, how imagery works and things. Mhm. Mm um. And, and you got to play around with also what is important in a piece. Um, what What's the idea? What do you want people to look at when they're, um, when they're looking at your piece of work? What's the main um, thing they get out of that? And those are the important things. Um, mm. So... Mm. Sometimes yeah. clients are looking for styles, um, or it may, or maybe we try out different styles to learn something from it, um, 
or mm -hmm. new, or try new processes as well. Um, a good way to learn is always to just um, try new methods and new styles and things. Um, do you mm -hmm. do you adapt to any styles or um, methods and things? Mm, not as as much, not as of often as I like to. <laughs> I prefer to call it evolving since um, it's a very slow process for me. I try to adapt to the client's references, but I end up always pouring some of my own style into it as well. I think uh, the kind of the side effect of already having a portfolio is that people come to you already knowing what style I have and um, uh, they're basically already all okay with my style that's basically why they can why they came to me to the first in the first place mm, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I I don't explore other styles as often as I should be. Mm. I think it's a wonderful thing to do, and an artist benefits a lot by doing so. I did I did more of that during college years when I I wasn't sure of what my style actually is, but I think I with practice, I think I've started to narrow down of what kind of um style I'm falling into. Uh, of course, clients give me all sorts of different styles and references when they order a commission, I, and I try my best to um, match those styles. But um, in the end, people kind of sort of want that continuity in, the, in your portfolio mm -hmm. when, they look, mm -hmm. when they look at it. Um, so uh i i guess yeah that's that's the thing whatever style you try to adapt to you would still put in that little bit of yourself inside and that's what makes it art i guess you pour a little bit of yourself inside it and that's what makes each art um unique mm. uh in their own way even though it's uh of the same object so yeah for for new artists i would suggest Please try as many styles as you can, uh, because that will enrich your knowledge and library and uh, vocabulary, for, for uh, so to speak. Mm. But um, once you you find that, don't get stuck in in that. Um, oh, I have no style. I, I think an artist should have a particular style that they can uh, hone in and master within time. So yeah, go explore, uh, adapt if you need, but don't lose your identity, I okay. guess. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, we all have that thing that we pour into our artwork. Um, like you can tell if someone's really stressed or um, quickly done a painting. Um, because it really shows in their work. Um, maybe what troubles they're going through at that time. Um, I've seen some artists do quite um, dramatic and scary kind of things, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very different. You know what? Yeah. You, you know what? Actually, I have had some commissions that I've done like on a, like a quicker basis quicker than usual mm. and it turned out a hit on the internet like um, it has more favorites more likes and I have absolutely no idea what what triggers that which is why sometimes I'm just like oh, oh wow this piece really <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> and then there's there's this picture that I've poured all my heart into and I added extra days working on it and it just it just kind of flies by on the internet without gaining much traction and I was like ah oh, well that happened yeah so yeah for me um, 
it's completely random. Sometimes the the piece that you love doesn't get much attention on the internet or from other people. Or other people think that, oh yeah, it's all right. And then there's a piece that you've done on the fly, and suddenly people just um just come by and say, wow, this one is really good. And I was like, really? <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just my experience. Yeah. I mean, I've heard heaps of artists that have had the same kind of thing happen to them. Um, I think it's the idea. Um, you can't always be your own judge as well. Like, you can't be like, oh, you know, I love I love this piece. It doesn't mean that everyone else in the world will love it. Um, yeah. So it's good to, sometimes I go get someone else to look at it maybe not from a creative field just from um, just someone to look at it and see if they like it yeah. or not um, and other times I yeah, have to go to someone that knows a bit about art and design to see what I can fix and um, yeah which is why I find live streaming very helpful hmm Yep. <laughs> if we were, should do it Twitch next time, eh? I think. <laughs> I think I quit this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do Twitch next time. I'm just gonna. Um, so yeah, you guys, if you're listening to this, um, it's now pre-recorded. Don't think it'll go live at any time. Um, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, now we're purely just recording. Um, but if you, we do have people. Um, I have announced in the live chat um, that we do can get questions from there. Um, so yeah, sometimes uh, art can get stressful and things. So um, it's fun to just doodle, you know? Mm hmm And like you were saying before, you know, those sometimes the doodles people will be like, Oh, that's so cool, you know. Um which is an interesting thing. Um so do you ever just um create art just for fun, you know, like spontaneously just for fun? Again, not as often as I like to, <laughs> which isn't healthy, if you actually think about it. Don't try this at home, kids. Please, <laughs> draw for relaxation. Um, I don't get to draw for fun anymore because most of the time I'm working so much to finish deadlines in time. Well, not deadlines per se, more like quota of commissions that I need to finish to be able to cover next month's bill. Um, I wish I could do that more often though. Recently I designed my um, my Dungeons and Dragons character, so that was fun, and I, I think I spent way too much time on that. <laughs> but I really think artists should spend time to draw for themselves, otherwise their passion or their, their, their energy, their creative energy, might burn out like me <laughs> well well not really but but um you get worn out faster without rest and that's what i think drawing for personal purposes does Definitely. so yeah yeah i've always well mostly most of my work is you know um for myself um i do have other client work um so i'm kind of the opposite way around i mostly work for myself and um, but course, when I had course, I felt it was a little bit different, like most of the time I was creating stuff for the briefs, um, not exactly for myself, um, so mm. I do under, understand that, um, but yeah, even doing this kind of stuff during the day, um, and doing all this stuff, I do like to just do doodles at night um, 
at the moment I'm doing Inktober. Mm. Um, which it's it's a really big thing this year. I've noticed a lot of artists posting. Yeah. Um. Uh. Even other artists making their own word lists and um making their own Inktober community kind of things going on. Um. Yeah. There's even little group competitions on DeviantArt. Um, mm. Yeah, it's quite cool. And as you can see here, you probably can't see it. Um, no. <laughs> um, might be able to screen share if that's going to go bad or good. Uh, screen, share screens. Just so you can see some of the process, so you're not so blindfolded um, mm -hmm. to what's happening at the moment. Like I can't, we can't stream it. I think next time, I'm going to stream it to Twitch. So all you YouTuber live stream people can move over to Twitch. Because um, I'm giving up on YouTube lives. I will be posting the videos as per usual. Um, but yeah. And this is actually playing up. But can you see at the moment? You can see me playing around where the eye should go. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that can be a process sometimes. Say I'm using grids and things. Um, sometimes I go back and forth between using grids to help me process what it should technically look like. And then um, I either scrap the idea because I don't think it actually fits or looks good um, mm. or I continue working on it so sometimes there's a bit of play in my work to that um, yep I'm gonna stop sharing now as it's gonna um, be bad but yeah just um, talk about that see you know life always has challenges um, yeah, we all get stressed uh, keeping up with clients and things. Um, even working on my own work, sometimes it's a bit um, stressful because I can't... Um, either sometimes I don't feel like actually working at that stage, but I always mm. push myself sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm not happy with what I'm creating. And yep. I look at it, I'm like, oh... I have, to, I have to fix this somehow. How I'm going to fix this. <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with the feeling. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, yeah, it is important to do your own thing. Just play around in your sketchbook um, kind of thing. Just don't... Just creating doodles just for fun, not to look good or to impress people or to please clients. Mm. It kind of, I was reading, because I get, um, what's the book called? Image and Ethics. Mm. It's an amazing um, digital art. I, yeah. Um, book. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. And I like to hear heaps of people's opinions and ideas about their work and... Um, all sorts of different processes you can get from these kind of magazines, mm. which is good to look yeah. through. Um, it, it's a magazine, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, ima it's call called it's a magazine. Imagine FX. Um, yeah, I, I think remember, I've seen it. Yeah, I remember. I think the first time I was like fourteen, fifteen, I got one of those, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, it opened my world to what kind of art is actually out there. Mm. Um, so you, how do you deal with stress and are there any other hobbies and interests that help you overcome issues in your art or yeah? Uh, I vent. <laughs> I vent to people. And my yeah. Skype contacts can testify to this. Yeah. I vent my problems to my friends. Which, again, isn't probably a healthy thing to do. 
Um, so I, I, I sometimes um, just vent to God in prayer, and when all else fails, I cry. <laughs> Boy, am I cry, baby. But I really find crying a nice outlet for for um for everything. Like um uh when you're stressed out, when when life gets to you, or when your art is just not coming out the way you used to because because it gets the job done and it triggers your body to release dopamine, which is like a built in mechanism that got been put into us to deal with stress. So yeah, crying is healthy when you're stressed out. Mm. In terms of hobbies though, um, I find music as one of my favorite escapes. Mm. Uh, I play the flute and our music team is usually assigned to play uh, at the church once a month. So um, there's rehearsals and such. Uh, that is energizing for me. I also sing in the choir, and uh, choir practices uh, happened in every every week at Sunday night. So uh, I, I feel energized and refreshed whenever I go back home from that because I'm doing something different than drawing mm. uh, than my work. Uh, plus. Um, the the people the people there are so funny and crazy, um, so it's nice to be surrounded with people, people of the same frequency, if you will, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> people with the same level of craziness as you are. <laughs> um, it's well since I work from home, uh, just going out and meeting people is something new to me. It's a nice change of pace, and so yeah, and I do those things to get to get recharged. Mm, definitely. Right, I think for me, I like to look and find new movies and things that I watch. Um, I remember going to Avatar and I was like, oh my gosh, I love the dragons and all the um, creatures and things that was in that. I was like, I so want to draw all those dragons. Um, mm. That really inspires me in helps me keep wanting to create things mm, and yeah. obviously sitting and reading books and things um, I, yeah, I, do, I do find other hobbies that I do like I do skate around every now and again haven't often but I used to um, go for walks um, sometimes I bring my sketchbook and just draw, like, go draw sheep down the road or something. Um, surfing the internet, I wouldn't say it's the best thing. <laughs> oh, oh, for for um for daily for daily um energizing, yeah, falling yeah. down a YouTube rabbit hole is one of the most <laughs> fun things you can do. But um, again. You can lose time very easily with that because, mm. <laughs> yeah, from one video to the other to the other to the other, and hey, one hour has passed. Congratulations, you have done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's why I am. Um, uh, I try not to go to YouTube, but then again, multiple monitors and YouTube goes so well with with each mm. with, with each other, and um, well. In this day and age, you can browse anything on the internet. You could live stream. Uh, you could stream anything on the internet. Yeah. You could. Um, you could even watch movies on the internet. So, that's not exactly good for yeah. one's pr- productivity. But then again, yeah. if 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 you're you're burned out and then you need a refreshment, yeah, the internet is always the easiest place to go. Hands down. (laughs) Sometimes I watch things while I'm painting and um, on the side, but then like it distracts me. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. Um, It's good. It's good when you don't have deadlines, or if if the piece that you're working on isn't um, mm. is just for fun. 
Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, when you have to finish like four or, or four, four to eight pieces a month, and then you find that you spent the entire day browsing YouTube and um, browsing Facebook memes, <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly productive in work-wise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a. I think there's a right way to use it. You know, like um, as with everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, if you're watching YouTube, you know, check out these videos. Maybe I don't know. Um, but you know, go check out. There's heaps of interviews at the moment. There's like um, there's Bobby Cheo ones. Mm. There's this lady that's just popped up on YouTube. I think she's called the Art Side of Life. Um, mm. and she's interviewing Funny. lots of artists at the moment. Um, and also Bob, Bobby and Jim, can't remember his last name, have made a channel called the Jim Bob channel. Um, Ooh. and yeah, it's, I'm, it's very different. Like a few years ago, I would say I was kind of struggling to find a lot of art videos um and now they're just coming at me like left right and center someone's making a new channel with new interviews and um yeah so there's a lot of videos out there <laughs> to watch mm. and there's heaps of tv series and movies and things coming out there's just so much out there to watch i can't watch it all <laughs> yeah Yep. Mm. Um. Yeah. I think. Do Do you have any like advice on using social media? Like, um. How How would you say you got your clients through your social medias? Mm. <laughs> I don't think I'm the person to give advice on this. Considering yeah, yeah. I'm not very social media savvy, Fair enough. but um, in terms of clients, I guess I got them from uh, opening journals on Deviant Art and uh, for Affinity. I started there. Uh, you know, the usual post a commission information in one of my galleries and uh, put that as a feature featured submission, so it, it pops up every time uh, someone comes into my front page, so they could see it immediately that I'm opening commissions. Yeah. That's one. But I guess that's more of a um, gallery website rather than social media com compared to um, Facebook or Twitter or um, what do you call them? Uh, uh, the uh, the, the 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 app I forgot. Oh, okay. The 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 app for for uh, pictures and such that people use, Instagram. Instagram there yeah, we go. Yeah. yeah. I don't have Instagram <laughs> <laughs> because enough. I don't take pictures with my photos. Yeah. And it yeah. I find it a hassle to upload from PC. Yeah. But from I don't know uh, advice for social media. I, I guess from my experience so far as an artist, try to try your best to keep your personal life and your political views separate from your work, <laughs> mm -hmm. and keep drama to a minimum. Mm -hmm. Because I, I I so often see um, people posting incomprehensible one-liners, which just scream teenage drama, mm -hmm. both in in um gallery journals um, because uh, if, if you've been to Fur Affinity at all, that you will notice that there are so many um, emo edgelords making journals about uh, their how, how, how their life is going, which I am guilty of this as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they go overboard and that really ruins an artist's um, reputation yeah. because yeah, uh, because uh, the art may be exquisite, but then people will just unwatch you because of um, what you post 
on your journals. Same thing about movie stars, really. I mean, their acting is good, but then reviews of them being hard to work with and things, things like that kind of ruins uh, an artist's uh, reputation. Uh, personally, I have two accounts for a lot of things. I have two Facebook accounts. Mm. Um, I keep my artist profile and my personal life separate. Again, even though I'm a clean artist, drawing anthropomorphic characters draws a plethora of assumptions I best avoid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Another thing is be consistent, I guess. Mm -hmm. Try to be alive and try to be alive on the internet and post things on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be like every single day or um like every two days. It doesn't have to be that often. Just just be consistent. If you want to post one week, uh, one one post a week, then post, uh, do that consistently. If you want to post one month, or uh, once a month, uh, then do that consistently. And uh, yeah, I think a little consistency goes a long way. Mm. Uh, that goes for everything, not just um, not just online accounts like social media, Twitter, Facebook, everything. Just be consistent. Yeah. Be alive. Be alive. Mm. I guess that. Pretty be much. alive on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Like, I always get these notifications from um, Facebook lately. Oh, you haven't posted in like two weeks or something. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Maybe it's something like that. It, it's. It's a warning label if mm. if if people are are posting that. Uh, or giving you comments on that, then you either can uh, widen the interval, like not having to post so sporadically, or you can just commit to it. Mm. Yeah. I think, like, you shouldn't, I don't think you should post, like, three pieces in one day, you know, like, you only yeah. post three three pieces in one day, and then you don't post for another couple of weeks. I yeah, think you should really um, get them out, and that's what I do. I've got a lot of hidden and unknown pieces at the moment that I could post whenever I feel like it. Um, what? Yeah, you? that that that's what I do as well. Um, mm. Spread them out. Right now, I have five commissions that I've finished, but uh, that's why I always post um, commissions that I finish this month in the next month. Mm. So I always have something to post on the internet. Uh, yep. Right now, I have five. Uh, last month, I did five commissions, and so this month, I have five commissions uh, that I could spread out and post on the internet. And I think that helps keep consistency and. Uh, for instance, I usually upload on Thursdays or Mondays if I have extras. So yeah, that really helps in my opinion. Mm. Try to keep some some materials uh, in your arsenal, just in case. I think though, because I did daily drawings um, for about two years, I think. Nearly three years. I. I definitely two years. I don't know if I made it all the way through the third year. Um, but yeah, I did daily drawings for quite a bit, so I was posting every day on DeviantArt. Um, so I think posting everything and everything that you've got is not the greatest move. Um, yeah. Because I wouldn't say exactly I lost a lot of followers, but um, yeah, not exactly. Um, taking much notice of me after a while, you know, of that. Mm -hmm. So, you're not posting everything and everything you've got. Um, and, obviously there's those pieces that um, people you post, you didn't work on long, but everyone loves it. Um, very viral images, and that's Sometimes you got to look at it and think, will that be viral? Um, are people going to be able to connect to it? Are people going to be able to share it easily? Like, is it going to be explicit material? 
um, with that they can't share it to their sister or their mother um, or is it is it going to be too violent if it's too violent um, yeah just think about what you're going to post before you post it you know um, yeah yeah and we're getting to the last little bit last little detail so we got two minutes so this is all pre-recorded you guys um, sorry for that um, but yeah next time we'll be on twitch um, I'll go back to twitch because it's better um, yeah so basically I'll ask my last question um, so basically what advice just go and close Mm, yeah. Basically, what advice would you give artists to create an interesting scene um, or something they can relate to? I guess it go it comes back down to what I learned from Bobby Chu. Um, story. Mm. Always try to have a story, and an an edgy looking character dragon character is cool. But an edgy dragon chatting with a little bird perching on his shoulder has so much more to offer. Mm -hmm. So, like, like it's like watching a Japanese anime. It's cool, I mean, the visions and all, but it's much fun. It's much more fun if you actually know what's going on. So without the subtitles, you really can't understand anything. So that's the thing with um, illustration as well I guess uh, if you have a story people will understand what's going on and and if that gives a whole much more uh, a deeper experience by adding story you 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 present your characters to be more than just a piece of meat so to speak it breathes life into the art because it triggers the viewers to think and process the idea behind it and when a viewer when a viewer is triggered to thinking something beyond the initial, the initial, oh, it's a piece of drawing, then I guess you have captured the audience. Mm. Awesome. Yep. I totally agree. And it's pretty much us. So, yeah. Yay. Uh, sorry it wasn't live again uh, in the other one. Um, just. I will be posting on Twitch and things um, about our next live streams when they do come. Uh, I don't know. We've only got part three of this um, episode to go, so it should be good. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me today for this part, and we'll see you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. We'll see you guys in part three. Hey, goodbye.